Turn with me in your Bible to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter number 19. times, and I believe that, 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 that God, when He saves us, amen, places in us a joy that is deep-seated, that, 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 that is just uh, beyond anything that we could articulate. In the Word of God, the word wisdom, when we talk about having godly wisdom and, and following the path that God has for us and seeking His direction that we may be wise in our doing, that we may be wise as serpents and harmless as doves, that word is used 234 times. We think about the word light and how important that is for us to walk in the light and live in the light and grow in the light and know that He is the light of the world. And, and uh, that word light is used 272 times. And then we think about love and that charity that God wants us to have and the love that He has for us. And that if we know God, we can know love, God, love because God is love. Now that word is used 310 times. And then we look at the word pray, and we, we need to not just talk about it, but we need to act upon it. Our life should be seasoned with prayer. We should pray without ceasing. Prayer is an important part of our life. We look at that, and that word is used 313 times in the Bible. So these words that I've given you are used multiple times in the Bible. But when we look at the word favor, favor is found over 400 times in the Bible. Do you not think that God doesn't want us to give our attention to, to what that word is when it's used 400 times within the Holy Scripture? 400 times the word favor is used. And I believe that one of the greatest experiences that you and I can experience in our life is the favor of God. They even talk about, hey, 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 uh, Brother Michael and Spanny, you're on vacation. You enjoy uh, Lancaster, and, and we enjoy that too. And, 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 and we all go to places that we want to experience things in life. And, you know, we want to experience things in life. We think about graduation. We think about maybe college. We think about marriage. We think about our grandchildren, our children, grandchildren uh, however that is, uh, a new car, a new home. Uh, all that we can have in life. But I want to tell you the greatest experience that we can have in our life is the favor of God. Amen. Amen. I want the favor of God in my life. I like to have the favor of people. You know, I like to stay off the radar at my place of employment. I, I, I like to do what, what the boss says to do. Amen. I, I like to keep favor with everyone that, 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 that is above me. I, I like to have favor with those that are even uh, a lateral I, 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 I like to have favor. It's a good place to be in. But the greatest place of favor we can be in is in the favor of God. The favor of God. 
Solomon writes and he says this in Proverbs 19, verse number 12. He says, the king's wrath is, is, is of a roaring lion, but his favor is as dew upon the grass. Amen. As dew upon the grass, but his favor is as dew upon the grass. How many of you have noticed that when you get up in the morning and maybe you walk through your lawn, you'll find that there is dew there? How many maybe you notice that even later in the day, the, the grass these days are holding the water, the dew is there. And, and so uh, we love the summer day where, where the earth's surface uh, from the summer day, the temperatures coming above, of the temperatures outside of the earth as everything collaborates and there, there is dew. Maybe some of you have noticed it on your windshield. Uh, you have to wipe the dew off. In the wintertime, it's frost, right? Uh, but the Bible says that His favor is as dew upon the grass. Amen. The simple signs, amen, of dew. It's amazing. You know, uh, in ancient days, mythology was this, that they uh, uh, they had different gods that they would worship. Uh, that of, of Ursa was the daughter uh, uh, of Zenus, the sun god. Uh, uh, Selene, the moon god. And Ursa, she was the goddess of the dew. Somehow the ancients realized that the combining of night and the breaking of morning brought dew. How many of you like to get through the night and have the breaking of morning? And when morning breaks, there is the dew of the day that God gives. Amen. Uh, in, in the night season, but in the morning, Sister Jan, uh, that, 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 that dew that comes. And so Hosea said it this way. He said the dew of heaven would be upon Israel. Uh, he realized that the darkest of night the people of God would go through, but as they went through the darkest of night, that there in the morning there would be the brightness of morning, but also the dew of the morning. Some of you folks know what it's like to go through the darkness of night. Amen. But uh, Hosea prayed and, and he prophesied uh, that Israel would experience the dew of the morning. Do you know what my prayer is for America Revival Church? Is that we will experience the dew of the morning. Maybe there's some dark nights that we'll go through. Maybe there's some difficulties that we'll go through. But we will experience the dew of the morning. How many of you uh, got up early this week? This has been an amazing week. We haven't had rain, number one. Praise God, right? Amen. We've got to thank God for the rain, but uh, uh, I'm hearing that we're above our water index, and so that's a good thing. Uh, we don't always get that, uh, that that news, particularly this time of year. So there's no heat, but it's kind of been cool. And how many of you have noticed how beautiful the mornings are to do? I believe that that is what God wants to do in our life. The favor of God is like the dew of the morning. God, may the morning break upon us. Moses prayed this. He said in Deuteronomy 33, verse number 13, Blessed the Lord be in His land for, for the precious things of heaven for the dew and for the, uh, the, the clutches beneath. God, thank you for the dew. I just this morning want to say once again that divine favor is a reality. We look at David and he was a man after God's own heart. And he had some divine insight into God. Uh, as he was a man after God's own heart, we look at his life and David experienced the favor of God. When you read about Samuel, we read about him growing. And in 1 Samuel chapter number 2, verse number 26, the Word of God says, And the child Samuel grew in favor with the Lord and with men. There's something about favor. Do you remember what the angel of the Lord said unto Mary when she found out she was expecting Jesus the Messiah? He said, You have found favor. And Jesus, the Bible says, had favor with God and with men. Amen. I believe that Biblically speaking, we can say that favor is such a thing and favor can be found of God. God help each of us to find favor in the sight of God. Amen. It may be as the dew of the morning. 
uh, uh, Abraham, uh, the Bible says uh, 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 this uh, the, uh, in Genesis 18, verse number 3, that I have found favor in your sight. Abraham said, God, I want to find favor in your sight. Esther wanted to find favor in the eyes of the king. And we look at these individuals, amen. It, it's, a, it's a hard concept for some people to grasp, but we can find favor in the sight of God. The grace of God be rest upon us. How many of you here this morning? Your prayer is, God, may I find favor in your sight. Some of you maybe are going through things in your life, and you say, "This is not where I want to be. This isn't my choice." But one thing that can be your choice, God, I want favor. God, I want favor. find that Noah had found favor in the sight of God. And because of the favor that he found, it was, it was to the saving of his life. Sister Jan, and of his children's life. Moses led the people out of bondage because he wanted favor in the sight of God. Samuel became the judge, uh, 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 the, 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 the last judge uh, 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 of, of Israel. Amen. And, 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 and he found favor. Esther, uh, she saved her people from destruction because of a uh, uh, favor that she found. Mary, she gave birth to the Messiah because of favor that she found. Jesus saved the world because he had favor with God and with man. I'm talking about favor this morning. And it will have an impact upon our life and what we do. We realize that we're living just between a dash of two dates. And there's something that if God should tarry, each of us want to leave behind. It is a legacy and it's favor that we found with God that we leave to other people. Amen. So this morning, our favor can bleed off on other people. Esther, her favor, it bled off on the people of God. Jesus' is favor with the Father and with man saved the lost of a dying world. We find that Moses led because of favor. Abraham, amen, he blessed and became a blessing even to us spiritually speaking because of favor he found with God. God help us to desire favor that's like the dew of the morning. Because it goes on and on. Divine favor. In Acts chapter number 2 verse number 42 and 47 the word of God says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and, and, and breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many uh, wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were come together, and they had all things uh, common. And they sold their possessions and good, and part of them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all people, and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Can I tell you that when the people of God get together and they seek the power of the Holy Ghost, amen, when the people of God get together and they break the Word of God, amen, when the people of God get together and are not concerned about what they can build in this earthly kingdom, but they're more concerned with building the kingdom of God, can I tell you that there will be favor among the people People. Amen. God help us as a church to seek the favor of God. Amen. And as we seek the favor of God, there's some things that I find. Number one, there is devotion. If we want the favor of God, we're going to have devotion to God. The second thing that I find is that there are teaching. Amen. As they come together, there was the breaking of the bread. Amen. There they were teaching and they were also fellowshipping. There was communion with one another, but there was also prayer. Amen. We want the favor of God. Uh, it's not a, a blab it, a grab it, a name it, a claim it, but it's getting to the place where we break open the Word of God. Amen. We commune with one another. We love one another. We fellowship with one another. Amen. We pray together. Amen. And then there are signs and wonders. 
others. I believe this this morning. When we get in the presence of God and we seek the favor of God and we do it God's way, there are signs and wonders. I believe bodies are healed, Sister Jan. And I believe souls are delivered when we seek the favor of God. There was the worshiping together. There was a gladness. There was a sincerity. There was praise. All these things led to divine favor. God let the dew of heaven fall on us. There's something about the night air, the air of the earth, amen, uh, and the dew is given. If you're studying, can dew be collected? You can actually read uh, that there are some greenhouses, Brother Josh, that they do not use any type of water, but they actually collect dew. And as they collect dew, they put it on their plants and they become viable and they produce because they collect the dew. I wonder this morning if we could be dew collectors. Amen. That His mercies that are new every day. His favor that He gives to us. I wonder if we could collect it and we could utilize it to bring growth. Amen. Uh, to, to us and to our community, to our church. Amen. Uh, favor. You see, when we look at the Word of God, you'll find that there was a king that was first king of Israel. You'll find his name was Saul. You'll find that Saul had a heart that, 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 that maybe initially was for God, but very quickly was for people. And the people chose him to be king not because of his spirituality or the leading of, of God to be king, but because he looked good. He, he looked favorable. He was head and shoulders above everybody else. So they chose him to be king because they wanted a king like everybody else. But there's something about Saul. Could he have? Would he have? Was there an opportunity for him to be blessed of God? Yes. But the Word of God says that he did not seek the favor of God. Do you want your life to be blessed personally? Do you want your marriage to be blessed? Do you want your family to be blessed? Do you want to go to a job that God has given you and be blessed? I want to tell you the remedy for being blessed is seek the favor of God. Amen. How many has ever stood by the bedside of someone who's died, but they love the Lord and in the middle of their dying, all that's exemplified is life. Do you know why? Because they've lived their life to have been blessed by the favor of God. Amen. It's not about how much money we have in our pocket, how much security we have. Amen. It's about seeking God and the favor of God. God, would you bless my life? Amen. Would you allow me to have great godliness with contentment? God, I want your favor. I believe that part of that of the favor of God is seeking a harvest from God. I said to you that we can collect up the dew and harvest the dew. We look at the model that's given to us in Acts chapter number 2. We find that they went and they sought the power of the Holy Ghost. They were in one place and they were with one accord. And the Spirit of God fell upon them and they began to speak with other tongues. And there there was the wind of God blew through. There was cloven tongues like a, a, a fire upon them. We find that the promise of the Holy Ghost is given. But we find that that favor of God in their life, amen, was so that they could go out and they could harvest. I want to ask you, uh, what is the favor of God in your life for? Amen. Do you want favor so you can live just a life of prosperity? Amen. God doesn't work that way. Amen. God gives us favor so that we can harvest souls for eternity. They leave Acts chapter number 2. They were all in one place and all across the globe they go. Amen. And they're seeking the favor of God. Do you know why? Because they wanted to present the gospel and they wanted to see souls change for eternity. I believe this, that we need to be fervent in our prayers. They there they were in the upper room. They were seeking God. They were praying seven to ten days. Amen. Their prayer sends up to heaven. There may be times that we sow in tears, but we're going to reap in joy. Amen. The favor of God. There's no shortcut to the process. Compassionate love. Amen. That we need to have. Statistically speaking, do you know that all people that attend church 
that nine out of ten of them were invited by someone in the church. God help us to find the favor of God that we reach out to others and bring them into the ark of safety before it's too late. God help us. The good Samaritan reaching out, the right doctrine, the right spirit. Acts chapter number two was all about them believing. For lack of a better term, can I bring up this modern day terminology? Here it was, these 120 in the upper room, and Jesus had told them, and I see the time, I'm going to quickly wrap things up. Jesus had told them to go and tarry the wake of the, the Holy Ghost. I'll send you another comfort. I've got to go, but I'm going to send someone. The same Spirit that has anointed me, Amen, has anointed going to anoint you to do greater things. So here it is. If someone gives you this promise, you say, man, this is a dream. This is a dream. I want it. I want this. Someone promises you that, 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 that I'm going to go, but I'm going to send you the comforter. So here it is. It's, it's a dream that they have. And so they, they go and they say, God, I, I, the dream, the vision, the promise that you've given me, amen, I'm going to run with it. Amen. And, and, I, and I want it. So as they run with it, they go and they shut themselves in. And they say, God, I want your favor. I want that dream. I want that promise. Amen. Can I tell you that I believe that, that, that when we are filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. It is the favor of God upon us. Amen. God favors us because we've been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. We've been delivered from our sins. Old things are passed away and behold, all things have become new. And now we say, God, I want your favor. And part of your favor is being filled with the Holy Ghost with speaking in other tongues. Amen. As we seek that, amen, God divinely favors us and sends the power favor of God. There's something that I love. Something that I love. I love that I go to my house and I flick a switch and the electricity comes on. <laughs> Any of you like that? You with me? <laughs> I love too that I go to the sink or to the shower and I flick a switch and all of a sudden water comes out. Sister Jenny, you're doing more work with all that, than, but someone's putting all that chlorine in there and getting all that and all, all the work that's done beyond my imagination for the area in which we live. You see, I am not the giver of it. I'm a receiver of it, but it keeps on giving. I'm reaping the favor of others. God, help us to seek the favor of God. This is like the dew of the morning. Because when the favor of God comes, we can't help but to share it with everybody else. I want to ask you a question this morning. I don't know precisely when it happens. I don't know all the science behind it when that dew forms upon the grass. You know, it's not... They say that we will get more dew if we have more rain. Maybe that's why the grass really is dewy these days. And if you mow your grass and find that even later in the afternoon it's clumping up in your, your mower because of all that dew and water that's on there. But however it is where the dew forms, it's called the dew point. I wonder how many of us are in our life or at the dew point. I'm talking about we've been living our life in the light of eternity. We honor God in our everyday life and we seek His face. We live according to the righteousness of His Word. We're walking in His Spirit and seeking His face. You know what I think we're at? The dew point. The dew point. And our text this morning said, but his favor is as the dew upon the grass.
Mr. Riley, if you come with me out this morning, what are those things that you're seeking in your life? Is most of all the thing that you're seeking the favor of God? It causes you to vision and dream what His Word has commanded you to do. And then you follow through with it. Just like they did in Acts chapter number 2. They followed through with what Jesus had told them to do. They went to the upper room. They tarried. They waited. They prayed. The Spirit of God descended. We find the church coming together. They're breaking the bread. They're breaking the meat of God's Word. They're communing together. And Sister Jan, as the dew falls upon them, they leave. And because they found the favor of God, now they find favor with people. You know what I want our church to be? I want our church to be a church that finds favor with God. Not a meeting place. Not a social center. Not just a place together at a particular time. But I want us to be a group of people that come with the vision and the dream and the goal that we're doing what God's told us to do. And as we gather together, we come to seek the favor of God. You've all done it before. Every one of you have sought the favor of God. As we seek the favor of God and God shows His favor upon us, we don't keep it to ourselves. That's why I'm not playing, praying for my own plane, Brother Dennis. I don't need a plane. I don't want to drive a plane. I, I, don't, I don't need those luxurious things. God wants to bless us with the dew from heaven and His favor so that we can leave this place and we can find favor with others and share with them the gospel of Jesus Christ that changes lives. Listen, it's greater than a degree. It's greater than a great big paycheck or bonus. It's greater than any fancy house on a hill. Amen. With a nice picket fence, the favor of God in our life will change us that we reach out to share the favor of God with others. Do I have anyone here this morning that will say, I want the favor of God in my life? I need to see the favor of God for my family. I need to see Him for this church. I need to see Him for this community. God, I don't come to seek Your hand in things, but I come to seek Your face that I may find your favor and others will be blessed because of that. Sister Susan, can you imagine being that young Mary and all those Jewish women that dreamed of being the Father of the Messiah, but there was something about her life that she found favor with God. But while well, they all favor with God. Sister Tina, I want favor like the dew of the morning. My prayer for you is the prayer that Hosea prayed. That the night might be long, but may you experience the dew of the morning. I believe right around these altars is the dew point. Would you come and find the dew point in the favor of God? Let's get her this morning.